A quick demonstration of superheat and subcooling in the internal heat exchanger, how it affects your superheat and the old school guys who will get fooled by the temperature of the suction line, if they're the kind of guys who would go by temperature and what the suction line felt like, this is how a internal heat exchanger, when you don't know it's on the car, what it is, how it will mess you up on your old school method of charging. Okay, so we see we have my temperature sensor right here, taking the temperature of the suction line coming out of the evaporator. And we can see that is 59 degrees right there. Today's not a good day to do this because it's so cold outside, it's like 60 degrees right now. So I don't think this will show a big difference, but if we look at the superheat, it's 25 degrees superheat. We're at 58 degrees is the temperature of the suction line coming out of the evaporator. Now we got the hot line, what's well not so hot because it's so cold outside, exchanging and giving off of some of its heat to the suction line. And so this side, Let's look over here. Okay, we're dropping in temperature right now. The computer has taken over and it's turning the swash plate inside the compressor, giving it more stroke. And that's what's going on right now. So we just dropped down to 44 degrees. So let's go to the other side and see what it is over here. So this is on the other side of the heat exchanger. You see this right here? This is the heat exchanger. This is where the liquid line goes in, 54 degrees. So we're 54 degrees on this side of the heat exchanger. And over here, we should still be back down to 44. So now we're back down there and we're dropping back down. 51. So the compressor has just changed again on its displacement. 54. Come back over here, 57. So you see there's several degrees. Now on some vehicles that when it's really hot outside and depending on how much subcooling the condenser does on its job, you might see a 10 or 15 degree change on this is on the extreme side of the temperature of your suction line going through the internal heat exchanger right there. And so the guys who go the old finger method go, oh, it's not sweating over here. Oh, it's it's not cold over here. I need to put more refrigerant in because I guess. I don't, I don't measure and weigh and do it properly. I just guess how to do work by touching and taking temperatures. Well, internal heat exchangers have been really messing up the old guys who are used to trying to charge. So you should never do that in the first place. But what I've found out is many of the old guys, the old timers who used to do this method, can't get it right when it has a internal heat exchanger, especially we have the variable displacement compressors that change the displacement of the compressor. So while you're trying to do this and look for some numbers, the computer is taking over and telling the compressor to do something else to compensate for the refrigerant that you're pumping in at the same time. You're chasing your tail. All right, see you guys. Oh, this shop here finally got a vacuum uh, coolant tool for drawing a vacuum and drawing in the coolant to get rid of all the air bubbles do it really fast and I'm I'm always glad I always give suggestions to shops because I always want to see shops do better and I want to see them become more profitable and I want to make sure they don't have comebacks and by not having that comeback of that customer going out or your guy spending a half hour or hour heating up a car cooling down the car heating up the car trying to purge out <clears throat> all the air from the coolant system you use a vacuum purge tool to get rid of the air that gets trapped in there and he said it only took him three minutes and it was the first time he just bought the snap on on well you know that's the real expensive one but vacuum purge body shops i don't know why they haven't learned this but can you imagine being in tw for 20 years you have been spending hours purging air out of systems and having those intermittent comebacks every now and then from a, a temperature light going on a car. It all could have been avoided if you've been using the vacuum purge method. See you guys later.